Ready? Are we recording? Yeah. Ready? Or no? Good evening, everybody. This is Tuesday, December 12, 2023. It is shortly after six o'clock and you are viewing and are here for the joint CROA and recreation committee work. Uh, before we get started, I'd like if we can just to go around the room and introduce everybody because I don't know I don't rec I recognize some faces but I don't know all the names and that may be the case with other people. So can we start with it? Rob Sasson Nashra Michael Masha, 603 Campus Street. Catherine Andres, Viella, 229, Celebration Boulevard. Victoria Hardison, Sterry, 1276, the Kegel Booth. Annie Wood, 1226, Roy. Amy. Annie. 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 Wood. <laughs> uh, 1226, Roycroft, and 2089, Celebration Boulevard. And then we have our board members. Um, they're probably more well known, but Jerry, do you just want to start? Jerry <laughs> Charles Richards. David Anderson. Bill Grindle. And Cindy Swisher. Um, I'm here as well. I'm John Trishler. Uh, I'm on the rec committee. You John just had a beautiful baby girl last week. Oh. So. Yes. And Rob had a beautiful granddaughter, November 20th. So recreation has good things going on. Okay, so um, before we get into owners' comments, do we have any? Do we have a sign-up sheet? Or any owners want to make a comment? I didn't. Did you put up one? No. Are there any owners that want to make a comment before we get started? Yes. No. Maybe. Okay. Um, well, I imagine that there might be some as we're discussing. So before we actually call the meeting to order, I just want to make sure that everybody on this. I, I want to make sure that everybody understands that the reason we're having this meeting is not because we didn't appreciate all the work that you put into this. It's because there was so much information. And I know I had several questions, which I took the time to write down since our last meeting. Um, and uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Lindsay had to leave. You know, So we wanted to make sure that we did it just and understood what you were putting forth. If, you know, We know you did a yeoman's job. You know, so, um, but anyway, so that's why we have a meeting today. So I will call the meeting to order at 6.04. And we do have a quorum of the board and also of the committee. Okay, do you have a motion to adopt the agenda? Make a motion to adopt with the modification. I'll second, I have a question as well. Um, so the modification, um, I wanted to, for about 10 to 15 minutes, talk about the Gallagher key card. Uh, decision from the last meeting and ask us make a motion to uh, table that based on some discussions with finance committee and um, an artisan park and agency actually joining us. So I guess that we can uh, spend 10 or 15 minutes on that just so we don't cannibalize time from the other topics. When's our, when's our next meeting? Next, next week. Next, next week. week. I. I know you say it's only going to talk take 10 minutes, but is any reason they can't wait until next week to do that? I just don't want to, I don't want to run into the same thing where we run out of time. If somebody, if we start really discussing this Gallagher thing, or just, just put it at the end. Just to table it, we, it could take one minute. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we brought APC is here, so I think if we can mm -hmm. carve out 10 minutes and then, I don't know, 10 minutes. I'm good with it. I'd, I'd rather not. I'd rather keep focused. So we've got a 
motion from Charles. We need a second. Yeah. And you want to you want to put it first on the agenda? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. I'll let it go. So that's three. That's three to two. Four. Four to two. Sorry. Okay. All right. So we are going to we've approved the agenda with the modification that we're going to talk about Gallagher for a quick ten minutes. And then my question was: There's a document included in the packet. This information about the foundation related to the organization. Uh, who prepared this document? This was sent to me by David. Okay. Did, the board. did other organizations get the opportunity to provide historical documentation? No, it was just no. sent to David because he prepared it. Okay. That was my only question. Okay. Good. Okay. So, Gallagher, go ahead, Charles. I'm going to make a motion to table uh, the weeks ago vote to move forward with Gallagher uh, just based on discussions with the finance committee and artisan park. I'll second. Have a motion from Charles, second from Jared. Any discussion? I did want to invite Jimmy, if that's okay with the board, um, if you care to come up, you might. Okay. So uh, Jeanine had reached out to the board about some concerns with how this progressed to you all. Want to maybe give us the recap and yeah, sure. I mean, it's a really, really quick recap. We were not privy to the conversation that the artisan park piece of it was not going to be included in the final 197,000. Um, and I know that there's been some back and forth of Bill McFadden was made aware and Tom Paul was made aware. None of that was brought to the artisan park committee. Um, and I can test Nick, myself, neither of us have any communication whatsoever about it. We'd like to have a more robust discussion whether we are actually liable for the bid and if we are liable for that charge. We looked in our reserves. That's not something that actually we've ever had put into our reserves either um, for us to replace. So just more so, there's a lot of miscommunication. We were made aware of this from the technology committee because most of us were not able to make the CROA meeting. Um, and we're not made aware that, you know, when you send everything together that we weren't a part of it. So it's more so just to get a good clarification on everything that's going on. Kind of like we're doing today, only different. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so the motion would be to have management stop proceeding on executing the contract and those sorts of things, correct? Until we can discuss this further next week at the board meeting. The table it will be the correct or do we want to or would it be to a, amend to what Jared has as a, pause any further action on yes. this? Table is fine, but yeah. if right now management is proceeding and executing the contract, having that whole process go through. Okay. But so. to, to be clear, we're not going to not do Gallagher because that no, technology just, committee spent it needs to be just further right. fleshed out and make sure that we, we've reached out to everyone. It seems like we had a gap in the artisan process. Mm -hmm. I know finance had some concerns. And to be honest, when I made my vote, shame on me, I added the, the two figures together and thought that the 196 was part of the artisan because it was all in there. Yeah, the, the, 190, the 197 was the actual gap. Plus the project and the project, management. And yeah. thank, thank you to Bill Long for pointing it yeah. out to me last week. And I said, well, no, that's not why I voted for it. So I, I was going to say I'm pulling back my vote on that because I thought Artisan was part of it. And since I thought Artisan was part of that. No, no, it's actually, it, it doesn't really that change. Who is that? Who's oh. speaking? All right, wait, no. just wait one minute. Let me finish what I'm saying, okay, so I don't lose my concentration. I have to pull back my vote because I thought it was part of artists. And you since, thought that Crow was gonna that Crow right. was gonna pick up the tab Which for the we, project. Honestly, I think we should. It's like cutting Spring Lake off from um our our software when we get new software and because they're a service area, artisan is a service area. But I can't, knowing that I was voting, I technically wasn't supposed to vote because when we're spending Crow's money, I have to recuse myself from that vote. So either way, I have to vote, pull my vote back on it. Yeah, and to put a bow on this, just because again, I know we're watching the clock, um, at the next board meeting, obviously we need to revisit this, we need to talk right. through it. Um, tabling it is not we're not going to move forward with it, but just that we need to have yeah. a little bit more discussion. That's, that's all. That's all this is about. Some more tools and more. Yeah. So, 
Thank you, Jane, yeah. for sending that email. Yeah, no problem. But thank you to Bill for helping me with yeah. my math. Uh, all in favor of taking a pause on this until next week's meeting? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. All righty. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks. Less than 20 minutes, too. Thank you. Good job. Thank, no, thank you, everyone. Okay. So. I think maybe we should start with maybe them telling us a little bit about the process, or we can just start and ask our questions and let it go that way. What, what's your pleasure? What do you think is the best way? I'm like just a thumbnail of the background. Oh, oh, okay. Right. Um, you may be wondering what was the purpose of why we even dug into this, whether you're on the CROA board or a resident. The reason that the recreation uh, dug into this is that it was requested by the CROA board that um, we have specific goals outlined for us of what we are supposed to do within our year. And one of them look at the recreation uh, facility fees and rental rates, also look at the definitions of partner programs and the civic groups within our town. Um, so that was one of the reasons. The second reason is the committee felt is that we are asked many times for special requests from different organizations in town, and if we didn't have a clear outline of why we should say yes or no, or what we should base those decisions on, and there was a lot of gray space. So the truth was we were shooting from the hip. So a lot of this should be able to provide an outline, not only for this committee, but hopefully future committees that will allow everyone to make a fair and consistent decision for all organizations within the community. So the next question you have is, what is the process that you went through? On July 27th, we met with um, the Finance Committee Chair, Mike Jackson, as well as Andrew, and we reviewed the CROA facility and equipment rentals for both residents and non-residents. We started with those two. Um, the truth is, this was very overwhelming for all of us. So we- Was or was not? It was. Yeah. <laughs> so it was very overwhelming. So we chewed through it with finance. We asked them to come back at a later date. We took a breath and everybody kind of went home with homework of what we were going to define and really kind of research of what we have done. We couldn't find anything where rates had been changed in 12 years. And so from that, there was definitely a reason of why we should relook at the rates and go from there. August 29th, we continued reviewing those facility and equipment rentals, but we also dug into partner programs and civic groups in addition to residents and non-residents. September 19th, we reviewed the criteria for what makes a group a particular category, um, whether they're an LLC, an S Corp, an association, a profit, a non for profit. And we begin to use that criteria as we begin to set up our definitions. Second, we discussed and assigned priority usage per that category. And the truth is, we left the priority usage the exact same as what it was previously. So, the way it was for the six categories, they are the same from 2017. We did not change any of the priority usage. Um, but you changed, but you updated the descriptions? We updated the description, yes. So then we designed a group to each of the organizations based on the criteria, ensured that the definition supported that particular organization. And that's how we went through it. October 3rd, we reviewed the proposed partner and civic group rates with finance. This was the meeting that they came back and joined us. Um, we asked for their feedback at that time and asked them basically to poke holes in it as we were not finance people. Um, this included, again, the profit versus nonprofit. We looked at flat rates. We looked at 80-20 splits. We looked at what it looked like to request a minimum of $2,500 a year in payments to CROA to qualify as a partner program. And we looked at um, designations and determining the right fit for each group. And we also began to discuss usage facility fees at that time. On November 20th, the committee finalized the facility rental rate for resident, non-resident, partner program, and civic groups. We also finalized the usage rates and the definitions for each category. Each vote for all of these were unanimous and presented to CROA for them to address on November 29th, which brings us to date. Um, the result of all of this is what does that mean now? Based on the information that we had, we felt what we put together was a fair and consistent model um, that allowed the Recre Recreation Committee and future committees to use when making decisions regarding rates and regarding space. We will be able to distribute the space based on designation with the same um, priority as it has been done in the past. 
and this will hopefully allow for residents to have access to more amenities in town to rent, as that's part of a perk for being a celebration resident. Um, and we also made sure that we did not place a premium for any specific organization, but instead we gave priority to the designation that way rather than an actual organization. Personally, I, I don't have any um, issue. I, I don't know what, it, don't remember what it was before, which does would have been part of this. The fees that you suggest are being charged because you know it is what it is, prices go up, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I, I do have some, I do have, and even Lindsay, and I think Vicki mentioned as well when we were talking about it briefly at the last meeting, the categories to me are still confusing. And it's it's difficult to decide, you know, who falls into what slot. So based on the agenda, should we then just approve the rental application and rates? Well, I don't know that this is, we just started a discussion. I'm just talking for, I'm talking for myself. Sure. Thank you. So I've been you know, looking at this, reading it and whatever. So I'm thinking, how did you come up with you know the descriptions and stuff? So it's partially what was has always been you guys added to it. So then I got to thinking about when I worked at the bank, whenever a business came in and opened an account, we had to attach a sick code to it, SIC. And that's something that the RS was, and it kind of lists. You know, it's this kind of group or that kind of group or this kind of group or that kind of group. So I pulled it up and I thought about that for a while and I thought, nah, still confusing. So then, and I guess this is all being driven by the not the the nonprofit group. I I have a problem. I have a problem charging a nonprofit group to use this building. I'm not necessarily talking about the others about this building, especially like during the day when there's not people that want to pay to use this building. That's kind of where my head is with that. Um, so that was, I have other questions, but that's kind of where, where I was going. Bill, what, did you have questions too? I have some no. questions. Uh, first one is a lot of the clubs, I, my impression, I don't belong to any of these clubs, but I thought some of them seemed like very informal pickup clubs. So how many of them have 501c3s already? And not all of them are 501c3. Some of them, um, I'll use Majon or Ping Pong. They're, they are a pickup club. Yeah. But, um, we put them in the same category as we feel that it offered a service to residents in the community. And then that was how they went into the club category. But if they're in the requirements, it seems like a lot of them now have to become 501. So if you up my, my reading that correctly. Part of that was looking at the civic group and which would be the number three category versus clubs being a number four category. Uh, okay. So if I'm in the Molly Jung group, mm -hmm. the Molly Jung group does not have to set up a 501. Right. Okay. And because do they get to play every week for um, free? They are allowed a certain amount of hours a month. And they go with the priority based on what one, two, and three in this case need, and then based on space left. Yes. Yeah. It's only because uh, 501c3s are heavy, to, not heavy, but they, they take a long time. They're expensive Absolutely. to set up, and they must be maintained for the IRS with audits and all kinds of ongoing yeah. stuff. So, I mean, it, not yeah, every club would. You know, so right. again, it's a service that's provided to the community. And they play during the daytime, right? Right. So back to my thing is, you know, why would we have them pay anything if the building building is open anyway? We have to turn on the lights. We have to turn on the air conditioning. You know, as long as there's not a paying customer wanting to use a room at that time during the day, well, then they get bumped. You know, either either you pay the minimum, or you pick another day to play. We are in complete agreement with you. And part of looking at this is the possibility of this building going down. And if and when it goes down, we wanted to have something in place as what little space will be left and how do we evenly distribute that. And that's where those priorities come in. With this space being completely here, we were not looking to make this a for-profit organization by charging, for, for instance, Mahjong. That's not the intention. But we are trying to put 
um, parameters in place for if and when this building goes down. So I, I thought when we talked last that you were hoping to put this in place the first of the year. But then that goes against what you're saying. Right. It will go down. This con this does happen for the year 2024, not just for January. And we were under the impression that there is a possibility that this building will go down during the calendar year of 2024. We don't even know where it's this just like it's it's not based on this building not being in place. It's saying it also provides the added benefit if this building is no longer available, it provides a prioritization process for the other amenity centers. Correct. Okay. So just don't. Don't think of it as contingent on this building. This is for a moving forward prioritization process for whatever amenities are available in celebration at any given time. We were getting to a place though, when looking at it, including daytime, that residents were being turned down for renting or for being able to use this. So that is where we did put in place, trying to add some parameters with each organization so that we continue to add benefits for the resident. And what do you base that on? That's where this came into play. Residents were being turned down to use this building? Yes. Because? So because civic and service groups previously, like Celebrators, Garden Club, mm -hmm. et cetera, you all book a year in advance. Mm -hmm. So if there's no space, I mean, we tell them it's not available because I'm not, I don't want to bump you when you already booked it back in January. So residents will look into rent these spaces? Uh, more, more of meetings per se. Um, it was more popular on the weekends for like birthday parties and activities room. But some of those clubs do meet on weekends too. So we put one parameter. We didn't put it in by weekday or weekend. Again, we put it in by the designation of whether you're a club or a civic group or a partner program, and we didn't um, define it weekday versus weekend. Okay, back to back to my that is another one of my questions here. Saturdays and Sundays, this building is not open, so whoever wants whoever wants to use it, no matter what designation, they should have to pay. The building is open on Saturday days. Who's in here? Embrace. Well, the, yeah, so that means Embrace would have to pay then. Or they could pick a different day. When there's somebody, then could they do what they, they do, do it on Friday? Saturday? Saturday. Saturday but can they do morning. it on? Can they do it on a Friday? Well, the kids come well, here on Saturday, Saturday morning. Or a Monday? Monday? There's a lot of student yeah. volunteers with yeah. that where they are getting their bright future hours. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the um, provision provided to the community to learn to volunteer on the weekends. But they look like, you can't because they go to school during the day. No, no, no wait. That wasn't what I was going to say. I'm gonna, now you interrupted me. I lost my train. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, well, this would certainly be less to open say Heritage Hall on a Saturday or one of the smaller amenities that it would cost to turn on all the lights and everything here for all, right? No. But again, this doesn't go by to what Lauren was saying. This doesn't go by a particular building. This goes for all amenities within the town. Like I said, I still, I still, what I can't get out of my head is having a nonprofit or club or whatever pay for using the space if nobody else is clamoring to use it. But when they book a year out, they don't get the chance to claim or to use it. There's also something to be said for the cost of just doing that. It costs the association and the homeowners money to open a building and have someone come in. There's just a cost to it. So charging for it is reasonable. Even if it's just to cover the cost, we shouldn't be as homeowners paying for everyone to use everything for free. Well, but that's what I'm saying. The building's already open. Is here, but there is staff setup time for a lot of it as well. Well, that yeah, that too, you know. But I, I don't know. I'm, sh I don't know how thriving operates with their classes and stuff like that. I mean, I don't know if there's because they have what three or four each day, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If they have three or four, you're talking about lifelong. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, lifelong. Yeah, three or four. They they have been utilizing Heritage Hall um, at the moment. Um, because I know they were making like a catalog. So mm -hmm. they would prefer, correct me if I'm wrong, Kathleen, you would rather in the catalog be at your correct location instead of like telling people it's here and then move back over there. 
So they've been at Heritage Hall Tuesday and Thursdays, I believe, because Wednesdays were a conflict. But it, it is roughly between 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Because I was saying, you know, as long as they were provided like one setup, you know, the building's already open, one setup that's this way, maybe, you know, if they say they use three rooms, maybe one is set up just with chairs like this. Maybe another one is set up with chairs and tables. Maybe some are tables with chairs around them or something. And that's the way they stay all day. And no matter what class, you know, they would put their classes. So your folks wouldn't be moving chairs around. I don't know if they do that or not. Correct. I mean, our team moves a lot of stuff. Yeah. Uh, we work with Janet with Lifelong. So if we are having bingo, we try to ensure that she's accommodating the larger setups. But even after three o'clock, we still have meetings in here starting at five thirty, six o'clock, where some meetings we do have to flip the room right next door. For example, is Star Dibs. We have to completely break it down. But tomorrow we have bingo. So we now have to flip that room again and set it back up. So either way, we're just going to, we're still flipping rooms continuously. For instance, um, in part of our research for lifelong, we in 2023, they use 315 hours of space. And then when you put an hour before that and an hour after that for um, setup and breakdown, that was part of the reason that we were looking at how do we prioritize and how do we make sure that we have enough space for all organizations. We're not saying to get rid of it, but we were saying to look at how do we streamline the process. And again, that's where that came into place. Anything else? No. Celia, do you have any questions? David, questions, comments? Yeah, um, I recall when I sat on that committee reviewing this and revising it, um, and I think that this listing is different than what we ended up with six years ago. And I don't have, I'm coming from vacation, not from home. So my other materials that I had last week are there. Um, but I think, I think this did change. Um, I'm going to defer to Lauren and Nikki yeah. on that, as that was what was presented to us. I want to charge it's the last meeting, but it, it's different than this one. Um, that being said, I appreciate all the work and the designation. I think, I think what these definitions do and the examples uh, provide more depth than what was there before. Uh, and I and I see that. I appreciate all of that. Um, so I have, I do have. Here's here's a couple of things that just confuse me. Club versus partner program, and I can read the description, but then I can look in here and some of it I just can't get. And then a subset in there is for-profit or not-profit. Because do we not have clubs and or partner programs where they are making a profit? Both categories have yeah. both profit and non-profit. Does that That's answer? what I'm, right, okay. okay. Yes. And so does the profit that's where Does the, the rates profit? change accordingly. Say that again. That's where the rates change. So each category has both profit and non-profit in it. Their rates would change accordingly, whether they are for profit. I or did not. I did not. Okay, that was not clear. Okay. No, 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 no. That's why we're trying to. Absolutely. Get no, 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 no. no. And you have to chime in. Because it's because it's yeah. <laughs> it's not just the twenty five of us in the room and online right, right. and the dozen or two that will look at it after the fact. We're talking about people three years from absolutely. Now. And so it, it just I, I don't know that th I'm going to say something. I don't know that I'll Me support too. what I say. Me too. But it, no, but it makes you wonder if there's a partner program A and B. So the difference between partner program and club was based on the amount of payments that they make to grow up. Dollar, and dollar, dollar amount. Profit they had to have um, rental, so to say. So if um, we'll use Lindsay with her not here, X Factor Dance is paying a certain amount and it exceeds $2,500 to grow up, then she is a partner program. If I am a club or I am an organization that doesn't give CROA at least $2,500, I am now a club so that I do not have to present financial documents. I do not have as much it's accountability. Talk, talk Correct. 
So that was the difference between the two is based on the amount that you are paying into FROA. Then that took to me what one reader that doesn't I mean the words the words partner program again the to me a key word is in the first line and run in partnership with town hall. I mean, so, so that's per the con that was our way of saying contract. We can look at revisiting that. No, I like that. I mean, okay. I, that's how I always thought of partner program. Right. And club is more informal. Yeah. Like and partner is probably a, a contract or a club will not. Again, but, more accountability versus softer. Right, right. More, And I think that's good. Partner right. program, that's good. Mm -hmm. But does that dollar thing to others come through? That profit piece, is that clear? Is, is that that everyone's take on well, honesty, it does not say that in the definition. Can we revise that? Mm -hmm. But that was one of our criteria is based on the amount they were paying in. So all of these that are listed as partner programs generated to Crow's bottom line mm -hmm. over $2,500 a year. Yes. So we went through every program, a recreation program. Right. And got, yeah, that's not. Yeah, I have the actual dollar amounts if we're needed. Um, no, when you say they pay you, it's strictly based on their what they make, what they um, and once they hit twenty five, <coughs> so twenty five hundred dollars is the minimum. Correct. The percentage payment. of their gross revenue. It, it's the percentage of their gross revenue, right? Mm -hmm. So a person that um, what's the burning? Was thinking if it's the 80 20 split, so the 20 percent of their growth, so any receipts that they receive, we get 20 percent. So if they're not performing well, they can't just put that space up right continuously, and then the clubs have to pay for use, correct? And there is an oh. annual review of that where they bring their financial documents that's set in advance. I think we said to provide the financial documents by May with the mm -hmm. hope of us reviewing in July mm -hmm. and then having it in time for finance to review so that they can give you a good budget in time by November. Um, Victoria, if if I may uh, add something. Who's that? This is John. He's on our yeah. committee. Um, we also discussed the possibility that even if someone's not making the 20 percent you know 2500 which would be 12,500 minimum that if they wanted to make up the difference and just pay out of pocket um that could be an option so say you make 2400 and you want to be partner program you could possibly make that difference um that was something we discussed as an option so if the club really wanted to move up in priority they would have to pay to move up in priority but that would be on a case-by-case -case basis well, here's kind of where I ended up in, in my thinking. Rather than having descriptions like this that, you know, kind of cross over and if then, then this and, you know, whatever. Wouldn't it be easier just to have a rate for partner program? Or, you know, nonprofit, residents, non-residents and other. So we were with your line of thinking. We talked flat rates for probably three out of our five meetings because yeah. that's easy and that's clear cut mm -hmm. and that works great. But we couldn't get there. And part of the problem is that each of the groups in this community are so unique, whether you are a partner program that is a dance, whether you are a partner program that is a little league that is non for profit. And then where do you get to in prioritizing that? So by looking at their actual financials, um, I think Mike said it best when he said we we are not a for profit that runs different agencies and how all of that works. You might correct me if I'm wrong, but there you are that we it's not our job to manage all that. So if truly being a partner with them is looking at their program and doing the split rather than doing the flat rate. Am I correct? Am I, I want to make sure I'm quoting yeah, you properly. Had, they had a real mismatch of different things. Some some were rentals, some were percentage of revenue, all those type of things. And Victoria said the 2,500, we stratified them. There was a natural break point to 2,500. Mm -hmm. And just stratifying, when you look at that and you say, okay, everybody below drops to a club and everybody above stays in a partner. Mm -hmm. That's how they got there. 
And that's what looking what every program did for that natural break. Wouldn't there then be a split with that if the partner programs are one thing and then everybody else falls under the other category? Up to a certain amount or something? That's what it is. The partner program does that 80-20 split. All everybody right. else gets a certain amount of hours that were free. And then that's when the rentals came in from that. We're in the rates for profit versus non for profit with a discount. So we did do it that way. It would help if this helped me anyway, and people that are trying to figure out where they fit in, if this was somehow laid out a little differently, you know, they like incorporated what we're both talking about, right. and yeah. then somehow it's, it's a little bit easier to you know, figure out where you fit in. Um, we assigned where you fit in based on what we knew about your organization. And that's how we gave assignments. And then based on what your approval is, then we would tell each of the organization, this is your assignment. And in no way do I think anybody on this community, if they said, we don't think that's really us, then we do welcome you to come to the committee and say why you do or don't think, and then we'll adjust accordingly. We wanted this to be an outline. I don't think we necessarily wanted it to be in blood. We are open to adjusting as needed. So that may mean that two years from now, so to pick the one bottom of the first page, right. Celebration Dog Training is now a club, but they have morphed. Now we but want to apply, I'm just proposing a project that will apply apply to qualify as a partner program. Aren't they a business? That, they are a club because they do not do $2,500 worth of bread. Yes, and that's so, where the confusion so that's is. That's what needs to be spelled out. Yeah. We yeah. can do that. So, that's so, totally fair. So here's the rest of the story. And so, the, and just what you just said, this is not meant to be locked in. Uh, this is a categorization as of December 2023. And, and, and then... A, a group who no longer meets the threshold may lose their partner program status. So that needs to be clear, very clear as to that this is fluid and how one changes category. Yeah, it's almost not in a definition. It's almost an overarching that applies to everybody. It's fluid. And that, and that just wasn't clear. You know, a subset, and I don't, Cindy didn't say it this way, but a subset that kind of bothers me is you know, when residents are, we're all paying our HOA dues and then we pay to rent a facility. I mean, it's, it feels like a double dip and I'm sure you talked about that. Uh, so it's just, how do we offset that? I mean, I've heard that from residents. Sure. So Why you part of the process for that is we cross-referenced what other, not only homeowner associations are doing, but hotels are doing that are close to us whether you're Malia or Grand Bohemian, whether you, so we looked at the different rates there. We could easily say that we are probably 80% less than what any other place is charging. So it's still definitely a benefit to the resident, but we used it to cover cost. So we looked at cost versus staff. We looked at cost work uh, on wear and tear and just to upkeep our facilities as well. Yeah, we don't want to we don't want to profit off of residents. We want to no. be able to cover costs. So exactly, and we just need to say that. Yeah, we just need to say that. Yeah. With with the cost, quick question. So how did Heritage be hundred dollars an hour in this room? Seventy five dollars. An hour? We did have to make a premium based on what was being requested by residents, and so we did do just like we prioritize categories. There, we prioritize the space, whether that's North Pavilion, whether that's Heritage Hall, whether that's Town Hall. And we did the same increase across the board as what they were previously. So, so it's not necessarily tied to labor because I can make a case for heritage cost anymore because there's no staff there. You got to have people going over there. We did it based on previous and went up by a percentage. Okay. And also it's got a kitchen. Sort of. If I might add, um, a heritage was also the most requested one from my understanding and it's the largest facility. Um, so that's another reason why we increased it uh, more than the others. Um, a little bit of supply and demand. I guess we're focusing. So, and before I start, so nobody comes at me, uh, I'm affiliated with the Celebration Community Course. 
am on the board and David is as well. And the conductor is, I would call him the son we never had. So right now they use the activities room on Monday. I calculated 37 weeks because they take breaks in between spring, uh, in between Christmas and spring and 4th of July and um, fall. No, 4th of July and Christmas. Veterans Day. Yeah, well, no, Chris, for the Christmas, I'm talking about concerts. So, oh. yeah, so when they, they're done with the 4th of July concert now, they won't start up again until August something or another. But it's 37 weeks I went to a calendar. So, they, they probably use the three hours. Right, two hours they're there rehearsing, yeah. half an hour before and after, just because all they use is chair and then the keyboard and thing. So the regular rate is 225, setup would be 50. And I think they only use one speaker, they might use two. So that's 325. So with it, they're not they're a nonprofit. So that would bring it down to 260 a week times 37 is $9,620. Tell you right now that would kill the course. They don't have that kind of money. I looked. I pulled up their uh, end of the year December 2022. Um, bottom line was ten thousand nine hundred dollars, but we're losing or they're losing the thirty five hundred dollar contribution from Crowa, so they will only bring in seven thousand four hundred nineteen dollars. So that'll kill the program. Is there no way they can do some kind of fundraising? I don't know what kind of. I mean, is there any registration fee? Yeah, but it's, it, this started as a parks and recreation program, and it was just minimal. I think the residents pay maybe fifteen dollars. Yeah, it's ten to fifteen. Yeah, and then I think non-residents now pay twenty, twenty-five. You know, just something like that. But that's for the whole year, and that goes towards you know buying music. Uh, Comprez is raising their prices. They're going to charge next year uh, for the three concerts. It'll cost them $3,600. That would come out of that $7,000. You would have to go through every single program, though, based on what you're, you shovel in your comment. I understand your comment about being on the course DOD, but that would take, and, and you've lost them really the framework and the objective exercise and the equitable exercise. Well, that's why I think a nonprofit, it should be different than everybody else. They are. But I mean, but not, less. but not, a, not enough to kill the program. Well, that's so subjective, we, though. Yeah. What do you mean it's subjective? It, you're, you're speaking of one specific program that you have a personal affiliation with. That's, that's, that's yeah, I chose that because yes. that's where I had the numbers. And to your relate. point, Comprez is raising their prices. Celebration is doing the same to get in line with what things cost to, to cover our costs because the homeowners can't cover the cost. This the organizations need to at least cover costs. Yeah, I mean, and I said this in the last week. We have accountability for Celebration Residential Owners Association. That that's no disrespect to the the chorus and the other programs, but again, I mean that that's that's our accountability for our budget and for what we need to do to to keep our costs where they are and, and whatnot. I don't think it's sustainable or equitable to start looking at every single organization and building card out provisions or, or questioning their, you know, what they do or if they, you know, deserve a special exception from the provision. It's a framework for sure. And there can be conversations, but um, we can't change our pricing structure because of one organization. No, but I, I'm talking about nonprofits mm -hmm. in general. Embrace, they don't make any money. Embrace falls under a different category and has different um, criteria. And different cost and stuff like that. They're number three. Okay. Okay. Uh, David, are you done, or do you have something else to say? Yeah, I have. I have um, two other items when I look at the programs. One is the last four. The, there's four together near the end. And celebration, a, a recovery of celebration, over and on it, it's the 12 steps to recovery. Those are very different. Yeah, we had a lot of conversations about this. Good. We really did. And I just, I just wonder, I mean, this is all about. Based on the criteria set previously, 
and what we agreed with, we couldn't call them a civic group. They were self-help. It, it's clearly, and I just wonder if there's a different category. That's what I wonder. We did look at it and we tried to separate it out into a separate category. But then when we got into that, we couldn't figure out what we would do differently that either A, stayed in budget and B, stayed within our space parameters. And that's where we... I don't, I don't know what you would do differently. I just... Yeah. It doesn't feel right that they're a club. It just doesn't feel right. Right. A support group. Yeah. And it's about... I mean, it's not just it's enhancement of life. A lot of it's survival. And I, even even if there's no financial implication, right? I right. Just, I just, we so, also did look at what was in the surrounding area, meaning like 192, not just within this town, yes. because it was very important to all of us. And I think what was unique is every single committee member had someone in one of these that was a family member or something like that. It, so it was very. Yeah. Just touchy, touchy. I get that. Um, yeah. And to be honest, after just much, that's where we landed. But again, I, I separate finances and sure. designation. Sure. And, and, you know, I know we start to get in. I mean, I, with, with Sydney's prior piece, the financial piece, we can have a designation, but we can also have different financial implications. So I think we can separate those, yeah. even though they're often linked. Nikki, keep me honest here. With what we have set up for these, um, we'll call them self-help at the moment, those four, with what we have, are we able to honor what we're currently offering to them? I think we, that was part can. of it. One, one group just meets at the North Ledge Pavilion for one hour a week. Another group meets in the Jones Room one hour a week. Um, you have the AA groups that utilize the uh, athletic complex meeting room twice a week for two hours each. Um, but for the like usage fee for those groups, if they don't require a registration fee, they can contact us two weeks in advance and we can give it some for yeah, space available. Right. Yeah. It, it seems to me it also makes a public statement that self-help is important. I mean, it's just part of our social, you know, it ties into our cornerstone of health, if you will. Just, yeah, it just, it just, and I, I honestly didn't realize we had the other, three other groups. I, I knew of one. I didn't know the other three. What is Nikki and, and Lauren? So just also from the um, contract perspective and, and management, is the theory that whatever this lands on, there would be a contract, a consistent contract with terms and conditions for each of these. Right. So obviously, the more you add, more contracts you're administering, the more fee structures, the more complex to the administration becomes. Is that accurate? Okay. So there is something to be said for trying to, you know, you, you want these to be reflective of obviously the groups that we have and, and the definitions and whatnot, but we also want to think about management's time and expense and administering these as well. That's an important consideration. It's something you did. You right. think about your, so. One of the things that got brought up too, where we really struggled, is in majority of these groups, there are more non residents than there are residents. So that is where we came to. They'd asked for two, you know, two weeks out. They could get more space if a resident didn't ask for it. And that was kind of meeting in the middle. That's important to know also and, and to track any any group over time. We, yes. Over, you know, track the history of residents and non-residents. That was something that we looked at as well. A in particular, that they're taking up three times as much time as everyone else. Yeah. And Charles, and that's why. We were discussing doing contracts because we can hold them more because yep. right now the partner programs are only the ones that have in their contract that states uh, the percentage of residents they can have. Um, the clubs at the moment don't really have a contract that states we can check um, how many residents versus non-residents. Yeah. So if I going back 20 minutes, if a club were to aspire to partner program status, that also has implications for how what the percentage of residents needs to be. I mean, it's, it's like it's not you don't have to just meet the dollar piece, but you have to maintain the percent. So these are important pieces that I think just need to be very right. That's part of the contract as well. Yeah. Okay. Um, then the other one, of course, it, uh, that was brought up at the um, board meeting what two weeks ago. Um, was about the Celebration Foundation. And 
you know, I made some comments then, which are based, which were based then more on the education that I have had over the years. And it's like, where is that in writing? Well, I didn't have anything in writing. Right, right. So I went and found, and I got some kind assistance um, from Kathleen in particular, uh, uh, with some historical documentation. And sure. so that I didn't have two weeks ago. That was not in my possession. Okay. No ours. No. I mean, I was re re relying on Trent, and I don't know his last name, but the first town manager. Four people before you, or five or six, but the first one. Uh, and a lecture that the foundation did. I mean, Kathleen, I don't know if you were Mike were there when Trent talked. But so, so digging into these documents, um, what I'm struck by, and I wrote this up because I didn't know if I was going to be here because we are away. Um, doesn't look like I'm away, even though the Uber driver got lost. Okay. Um, but so I wrote this not knowing, you know, thinking I would be submitting this in absentia. But what really struck me that I didn't write in here is I, I go back to when Disney planned celebration, the celebration project. And I go back to their vision and honestly, their brilliance. And I know that, you know, they brought in experts from around the country, like to plan education, one of the five corner shelves. They brought in experts. In fact, two of my colleagues at George Mason were at different universities at the time, and they happened to have come and helped plan. And then politically, once, it, once the rubber hit the road, it didn't work. Uh, but they did that for help. They did that. Uh, but I think that, you know, as, as diving into this, one of the cornerstones that I, I challenge any of us to find another community in the nation that has it is honoring the, the, the sense of place, uh, the, the spirit and the culture of the community. We talk about it, you know, I've written about it, and it's like, what does it really mean? Well, when they set up celebration, they had... It was initially uh, the Walt Disney Company, and then they had the Celebration Company, and they had four divisions or four places. One was called the Celebration Community Association, Property Owners Association. That's us. That's Crow. That, that was our name then. And then they had Community Development Districts. That's the CCDD. They had Sales and Marketing. And then they had the Celebration Foundation. Um, all four of those entities, not sales and marketing, that's TCC, uh, the celebration company, they all exist today. And so with that sort of thinking, I'm thinking there needs to be a different designation. I'm not talking about dollars. I'm talking about designation. It is not a 501c3. It's a different 501c3. So technically, what, yes. What does that mean? Hmm? What, what does that mean? Technically, it's a 501c3, but it's philanthropic. And How is that different? And I think that because of the history, thank you, excuse me, because of the history and the vision of Disney and honoring that and bringing that forward, it's imperative that there be a different designation for the Celebration Foundation, not buried in a civic and service group or nonprofit or charitable works. It's all of the above. It's a different designation. And I would propose a designation two or a designation one A. The problem with a one A is that it's no usage or equipment fees, which would be delightful. But I think that, you know, my uh, Kathleen could speak to whether that's an issue. But from my view, I'm talking about designation. It's different. It's different. And that's, you know, what I've written here and summarized comes right out of public documents filed in the Osceola records, Osceola County records. Uh, and I've quoted in what I've written uh, right on page eight and nine, the beginning of that. Um, and, and the language that they used was in perpetuity. That's the language that Disney used in setting up the foundation to operate and do its good works in perpetuity. Um, to me, I know that we've talked, Kathleen has come to multiple board meetings and talked about the good works of the foundation internal, external, we've emphasized a lot the hunger on the 192 corridor and so forth, but uh, truth be that 90, I'm sorry, 80% uh, 
I wrote that in here, 80% of their works are serving celebration residents. So I think it's got a unique place. And I, I have language in here that I would propose uh, that we call it the um, a um, celebration based philanthropic organization. Because the, the focus is on celebration, it is philanthropic. And you, and you can correct the foundation. Say that again. Excuse my ignorance about the foundation, but can you outline what they do? I don't know. What do they do? Yeah. I'm just saying, excuse my ignorance about it. What, what, what do they do? Yeah. Well, in, in so, just I'll, I'll say briefly, and Kathleen will say it better. Inside the community, they do thriving in place that keeps help people stay in their homes rather than go out of their homes. Uh, they do the lifelong program. People pay their own way for the lifelong program. Uh, they do a concert series. And then uh, out in the community, there's um, meals to, to like, I, I think, what is it, 40% of the school? Uh, what, we, what percent of the schools? 38%. 38% of the schools, they're providing meals for the weekend so the kids fill up their tote bags and go home and they have food to eat. Uh, so it's philanthropic in the community, outside the community, as well as inside. I don't know if that's a, a fair statement of what you do. Total ignorance. Can't have to ask. I, have a question. I agree. I want to talk to you later because obviously my marketing is not reaching you, and I would love to know how it's going. Okay, great. Thank you. David, Jeff Smith. Person is the executive director for the Celebration oh, Foundation. Get it from the horse's mouth, Absolutely. so to speak. I just want to clarify because you, you're the basis of your argument, and I want to make this clear to residents. You made the statement that the Celebration Foundation is not the same 501c3 as no, other. No, no. I said, I said that, is, that is what you said. No, I said they are not just a five. It's it's not five hundred one c three. It's a special. Okay. I mean, it's a, it is a five hundred one c three, but they're very different than other five hundred one c threes. But there is no different designation for organizations other than five hundred one. There are other designations five hundred one c four. There are other. Yeah. They meet the requirements and are solely a five hundred one c three, just as that every is, other five hundred one c three. That is correct. Okay. So the the issue I have with this. Celebration based philanthropic organizations. What happens when? So, do we need to go through every single one of these now and bucket every single one that belongs in this category? Because that is, that is, is there any? Well, technically, yeah. well, but that's a uh, lifelong is a civic and service group and no one's well, advocating. I'm, 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 I'm Celebration Foundation. I'm looking at like, I'm in place. There's Celebration the Foundation. Right. They're one in the same. Lifelong and thriving is part of the sub. It should name be. I don't think it should be divided, should it? They're not different organizations. We, no. No. we kept them all under the same umbrella, which honestly was part of the concern because of the amount of hours used by thriving, thriving in place and lifelong. And that, go ahead. And that was part of the consideration. We did keep it under one bucket. We do look at them as one entity. But that was part of when we're looking at who is using the space and how many, you know, hours per year weekday, quite honestly, as well. Um, for instance, we see an organization that's holding space from like nine to three, but maybe they're really using it from 10 to one. And how can we work with them to continue to maybe lower that amount of hours and that type of that? But that's why they did fall under number three is because they do match these things. And my argue, argument is that based on the uh, the vision and wisdom of Disney 25, 30 years ago, um, they have a unique role and deserve a separate place. It's not unlike putting self-help. I mean, self-help has a separate designation, I believe, is, is valuable. I think I think the foundation has a separate designation. What are the legal implications? So if we were to give this what group A, this and group B who does something very similar, who is a 501c3 that is celebration based. And philanthropic. Is, and philanthropic as well. So they both do the same things by giving one preferential treatment. My question is, is there any legal liability that would come to the homeowner association? Why not cross, cross that bridge if it appears? That, that is not our charge. 
our charges to not our charges to be proactive so that we don't get into discriminatory litigation and so that we don't get into that that's I think that's that's a really <laughs> if we can't answer the legal piece of it yeah I don't think we're doing it by our residents I don't see in this document David where it says that there is any preferential treatment for celebration foundation in this document that you provided I understand it provides the history of the foundation it just doesn't no, I'm, su I'm suggesting that it be priority one or one a or or two no, I understand what you're suggesting. I just don't understand why. Because it's, it has a unique role in the history of celebration based on the wisdom of Disney. Well, and I also think that, that that the foundation supports this cornerstone of community, just like all the other nonprofit organizations do, include you know, including people like AA and and which is why we can't separate them out. Just like what you said, they're doing what all those others are doing. And that's specifically why we didn't separate them out. You you nailed it right there. But the foundation is in the covenants. But they're doing the same it's thing. Not. As as where, where is it in the covenants? This one right here. This is. It's mentioned. Described and funded. That'll mean they're not a defined term. CDD and community association are defined terms. They're not under governmental authority. They're not under community association. They're not under CDD. Laws, law improvement, declaration, owner, on premises, project, property work. The reference to the lien. Not that it's paid. These are not the Crow covenants. It tells you the celebration covenants. Yeah. It's a perpetual covenant. It's not the covenants. Right. But these are not what we as a board are, are asked with upholding and executing. Oh. So he was putting the vision of this, but nonetheless, it's not entirely accurate to call them our governing documents. Um, I didn't call them that. I'm not saying you did. I'm saying that there were references to this in your case. So, so these, this document is in Osceola County, mm -hmm. um, 12 27 2000 by the world. Walt Disney World Company. Right. They created the Celebration Foundation. The foundation is what sits under our my cornerstone. So all of these organizations and clubs and civic groups and partner programs weren't created by Disney. Only the foundation. Only the foundation was. So it and and and, and they funded it. Right, and they funded, yeah, I wrote that down here. They funded it initially. Uh, preferred vendors and builders were required to pay into a fund initially. And then the initial employees were celebration company employees. Mm -hmm. And then when they stopped that, they provided annual funding until the year 2000. But, you know, what I'm remembering from Trent's lecture is he said, Disney in its wisdom did not want to put and this is what I said at the board meeting. They did not want to put the foundation within Proa for fear it would be destroyed. And that's what's happening right now. But aren't like a percentage of home sales going to the foundation or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's actually in this document. That's the one so thing this document is still, says. We're still getting funded. something out of our pockets eventually if the transaction happens. It, the statement you just made would, would, would mean that we're also destroying the Catholic Church as well based on this document because they're another civic service group and we're not giving them preferential treatment. So do you believe that? That's the same. I'm thing. arguing I'm preferential, preferential treatment. I'm arguing that Disney anybody's is. supposed to be getting I'm preferential treatment. what Disney intended. They, they, intended they were one of the four key groups. What about and downtown? What about they downtown? are one of four they, they aren't listed as one of the four key groups. Unless you find other documents to say otherwise. So Disney's vision to sell downtown. It's got nothing to do with I'm just saying we're going to go based on, <laughs> no, I'm going based on what history said. That's that's the assignment I took away from the challenges at the last board meeting. Yeah. I, and I agree with all that. I just don't see where it says anything about shall have preferential treatment in perpetuity. I don't see that anywhere. Who has said uh, perpetual? Uh, that's what David. That's what I said. But that is part of their language. It said they shall have preferential treatment. No, it didn't say preferential. It, it, how did I quote that? In perpetuity. The celebration Foundation to, to serve the community in perpetuity. I don't feel we are dismantling that at all. 
That's part of their mission statement, how, not how, ours. How is it if we are not cooperating? How is it on us then to go through? How is it on us to, to justify one organization's worth over the other? In my opinion, we would have to go through every single organization and we've lost the, the objective exercise at that point. I, I just, I, I struggle with this. I'm the sorry. objectivity comes from what Disney said, four groups. They're not a group anymore. But we, yeah, the, same. the Celebration Foundation, one of the four. CDVs as a group either. I mean, that is our group. And they're listed in the first category. Well, sales and marketing, where did that go? What did I say? TCC. I said they are no longer, but TCC is. There are still four groups. They're not all 501c3s, though. No, they're not. CDV? I don't know. They are not. Space too. Yeah, I do have to admit that I, I personally take offense that we're dismantling the foundation. Well, you're not dismantling, but we're but that we're, was said. we're disrespecting them. By, in my view, by putting them in a category that describes by them. burying them and not providing the the. It's not burying them. It's yeah, it it's it highlighting is. what they do. They are a nonprofit. They do charitable works. They have proof of nonprofit status. There is nothing that is in there that discredits what they do, that discredits what they did for the community, and that I... discredits what we appreciate them for. They follow all of those. And that is what this community has done is create the buckets. And if you fit that description, you go into the bucket without giving any organization preferential treatment. It is fair and it is consistent amongst all organizations. So why are we prioritizing them above family fitness and cyclones and I mean below and yoga all get above the celebration because foundation? Because we priorities yeah. and they fall into the club category based on the description. So that's why I'm suggesting a different category too. But then we would have to put the others that do the same things that have that description and that category as well. Are there any? If you want to, yes, there are. Philanthropic. Yes. Celebration based. Yes. Created by Disney. Created by Disney. That's created not by a Disney. Is not put a that in the language. Created yes. by Disney. Created by Disney is not in the definition. I understand. No, I, your... I wrote a new definition. I'll put it in the definition. I wrote this. Creation committee that made the definition. We're talking about the definitions that we made right now. And I'm proposing a new definition, a new category. Based on your affiliation with Celebration Foundation. Based on what? Your affiliation with Celebration. I'm the liaison. I'm not, I don't have an affiliation. I, that's what you're basing. That's the liaison. Right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's not a position. You said affiliation. I didn't say a position. Okay. So I, I would propose different language. And then they're, they're, they'll have to worry about others. I'm still stuck on the nonprofit one because I think that adds to the community, whether it's a 501c3, whether it's a bridge club, whether it's an AA group meeting. I think that supports our, our cornerstone of community and they should not be charged to benefit our community. They're not even breaking even at that point, though. It's not benefiting, it's charging the community again. Just to be clear, 501c3 is purely a tax status. It is does not demand any requirement of philanthropic work or, or other things that we're discussing here. It, it does not require organizations to do um, specific things. There are requirements you have to meet, but a 501c3 designation is not a wholly Correct. A, non, a nonprofit organization. They're involved in art, science, charity, religion, and educational research purposes. We do not have full time employees, but have volunteers. And their sources of revenue are donations, fundraising, membership dues, and funds are sources of raising money. Where is that from? The internet. Okay. And I can tell you not for profit too. But the Celebration but, Foundation and other organizations that fall into this do have full-time employees yeah. and would go against that definition. But I'm talking right now, I'm talking specifically about the nonprofit because those David 
David is asking for a special designation for the foundation. I'm asking that we should reconsider charging any nonprofit group. And I feel provided that. it's during like regular business hours and stuff like that, and provided they're not asking for a lot of uh, set up stuff and you know bothering staff. If the building's open, then it's open to them. What's management's take on that? I mean, just from a when they were here previously, it was three to four hours a day of room setups and breakdowns. A day. You talk about the foundation when they were here in town hall. It's been less than no, they're at Heritage, but if they come back. I have to ask Kathleen a question. Sure. I think I Kathleen's know. going to be speaking, isn't she? If she wants to. Prior to this, our understanding is that you were three on the priority scale. Has there ever been a time that you were not able to get the space that was needed? to uphold what Celebration Foundation needed to do with that priority. So based on this 2500 and partner program and everything I just heard, I am a little confused. I think we're in several categories. Because last year we gave Prella in 2023 was given them over $9,000. So then we would be in that 2500. So then we would be so I, I don't know where we land right. based on what we're doing. I will tell you that we had a great relationship with Pro. We get invoices, we pay them. Um, I think the way that everyone's been talking about, you know, why are you uniquely different? I think it comes down to um, that we're tasked by this perpetual covenant due to the estoppel fee that we received started at $250, um, we are obligated then to keep those funds in the community to enrich the lives of the community residents. So we're not asking for preferential treatment. I don't remember ever kicking anybody out or taking a room from anyone because we are in the off hours when the kids are in school or X Factor is in here. Um, I'm a fundraiser. Of course, I'm going to ask what's the best price you can give me. I'm supposed to do that, aren't I? Um, but we've never asked that it be different. When we call it Heritage Hall or Winter Wonderland, um, Nikki's response to me was, there's no revenue on the books for the hours that you want. Yet social media has blasted the foundation Though I signed a check for $1,980. So there seems to be a real disconnect. Mm -hmm. And it makes me, I'm not going to say sad, disheartened, frustrated. Um, I moved here in 2009 because it was a great community. Um, and Disney put partners in place and, and entities that thought that we could work together. Um, I appreciate the work and, and I said to you out in the hallway, I, I feel bad that you didn't have this document and this history. And then just like you said, in 2017, you were in this category, but that would be impossible if we were partner programs. So we would be in multiple categories. So but I don't think I answered your question. No, <laughs> but you do not get the space ever. See, I came in 2019, so it was well, COVID, since your time yeah. in there, that would qualify in there. I mean, um, that we turned down the foundation for something else with keeping you at the level. No, I don't believe them. I think we just want a different categorization. We're not asking for different prioritization. We have certain stature in this community because of how Disney set it up. Because we have a one-time transactional relationship with every homeowner, not monthly like CROA and not annually like CCD with real estate taxes or water, but we have a financial commitment with every homeowner that we're trying to achieve. That's all with the different category. 
but if we as a recreation committee have been honoring it as a three, and it has worked for the foundation for many years, and we could run into something legal, we don't know. It's not broken. Why fix it? I'm a I can't cite chapter and verse. I've been involved in the foundation for quite a while. Foundation since uh, 2010. So obviously, as the community is growing and the demand on our space is growing, the um, the funnel is narrow in terms of capacity. The reality is that we haven't had a problem, but I would tell you that the foundation always got a preferential treatment. And I would tell you that the um, Categorization probably wasn't followed very strictly. I'll look at Mickey with some history there too, because just it just worked. Because there's always the events, whether it was the home tour, winter wonderland, driving place program, the lifelong program, whatever. Those things just happened, and they were like a fixture. It was like in the fixed schedule, and other people came in and got their place based on priority, I guess. But now that we're getting larger and more things, if we're in this third position and this gets applied or very strictly, mm -hmm. we're gonna have a problem. We're gonna have, you heard three hundred dollars for lifelong or whatever it is. It's, it's gonna be a problem. We're not talking about the economics. Mm -hmm. We'll pay the economics. I mean if you if the organization wants that money to come from the foundation to there, we will pay it. We'll have to adjust our fees. We'll have to do some things in order to cover costs and so on. Um, we paid nineteen hundred for the mm -hmm. um, heritage building. You know, on social media, we didn't pay anything. We got a contract and it wasn't supposed to be the pool and it wasn't the pool and on and on and on. By the way, for the record, there was between Monday and Saturday, there was 18 people swimming. 18 total, from Monday to Saturday. I counted them every day. Three people swam lap, two people swam laps three times. So there was, what, 18, there was 14 unique people that were there in the pool five days or six days, whatever it was. Most underused pool there is. But you would think that we chase the masses out for something like that. The $1,900 we paid, we're glad to pay it, okay? You know what a pallet of food costs for the lifelong learning pro for the Learning Without Hunger program? About $2,000. That's 288 bags of food for the weekend. If Crowell wants that money, and we'll just have one less pallet of food to go to the kids that are living in cars, in tents, on 192, you know, insecure with food, hungry over the weekends. If you want that money and you think it's more important for the residents, which $1,900 is about 42 cents per household. If you think that's a better spot to spend it because you have your criteria, and you've done things according to a designation, we'll honor that. We're just trying to raise the concern that there's some unintended consequences here, and you might want to think about it. I think one of the big problems, not the problem, challenge, is that everything's been done based on the designation of the organization, how they're formed, nonprofit, S Corp, whatever, whatever, whatever. That's kind of a vanilla across the whole thing. I don't have a better, a much better solution for you, but to use that, it really creates these unintended consequences. And I think what you're hearing is the foundation is unique, was in the business plan when Disney did it. They funded it with seed money up front. Then they set up a per perpetuity covenant to fund it there too. Um, that particular income, by the way, is less than percent of our annual revenue revenue. When I joined in 2010 with the foundation, that was 80% of our revenue. That's what the foundation has grown, diversified, and its programs and everything else. So if you get some history and understand the history, it's pretty damn dynamic, dynamic in terms of what's developed with the organization. So I yeah, and I, yeah, the embrace thing, um, the other nonprofit, I don't know if any other ones. Look, embrace, Benita is a friend of mine. I contribute to embrace every year, several times a year. The foundation has given embrace. 15,000 for a van, probably about 20,000 food and, and uh, gift cards, you know, 
all the gift cards, we buy all the gift cards. There's also the summer, there's some Boys and Girls Club, Salvation Army, the Hope Center, and all that group. So we're a strong supporter of Embrace. Anita is delivering service at the point of contact. We don't do that. We run our food through the school district warehouse. It goes to the schools, volunteers put it together in bags, and it goes out to the kids on Friday for the weekend food. Benita's in the back lot apartments. She's touching them right there, working with things. Kathleen works with her very closely. 100% of Benita's work is outside of celebration. She's celebration based, but 100% of her contact with clients is outside of celebration. 100%. But she fundraises in town. We support her. She does good work and she's an extension of us. But 100% of her work is outside. As you heard David say, the foundation is 80% inside. The only thing we really do outside is the learning about how their program because all the elementary schools and high schools are in that type of stuff. So 100% of our work is right here. Do we get outside residents or outside people coming in for a concert series or dialing in from someplace in the country for lifelong learning? Absolutely. Absolutely. We've got those two. So they're apples and oranges. They aren't even close. Benita is a fraction of what the foundation does on an annual basis, a fraction. But she is a wonderful woman. She works her rear end off. Yeah. Uh, she's very effective and we'll continue to support her. Yeah. We'll continue to support her very strongly. So you have the foundation supporting Embrace with all their- Actually, when Benita first started out, mm -hmm. we, we talked about incubating. We incubated it and yeah. I helped her get into a 501c3. Because she was doing things that needed to get some organizational structure behind it. There were some legal situations that were involved, and we helped her get that 501c3. We do those kind of things. A lot of people don't know what they are, but we incubate things in the community. I apologize for preaching. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to educate in a very short period of time here. I probably didn't do a very good job. Of it. You Thanks. did a wonderful job. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Well, but can, can someone explain the 80% that you do in celebration? Yeah, they run through the programs real quick, maybe. Sure. We give 10 scholarships to Celebration High School students annually. Um, we do have the Learning Without Hunger program that we talked about. Learning Without, I'm going to kick in with it. Learning Without Hunger is about $125,000 a year. You get a $40,000 grant from um, Advent Health and $70,000 from um, Ottawa um, County Commissioner. We've been getting those grants for three or four years. And then there's other donations, so it probably approaches 150000 The Celebration K-8 and Celebration High School, Celebration High School actually orders the most pallets. Um, they have almost 3,000 children enrolled um, that do experience food insecurity on the weekends, spring break, holiday breaks, and over the summer. Um, the Aldi gift cards that Mike keeps referencing, the reason we use them, it's not a promotion for Aldi, is it is the only gift card after my many calls during the pandemic that is food restricted only. You could not buy toilet paper during the pandemic with that gift card. Um, so we know that it goes right to food when we give that to our students. Uh, we have our Thriving in Place program, which is to keep seniors and disabled citizens in celebration. Um, have socialization and neighbors just basically helping neighbors. Um, I don't know if you have parents that are living elsewhere. My parents live in Philly and Jersey. Um, they don't have somebody that can run them to doctor's appointments and pick up their prescriptions at Publix. We have that unique to celebration through that program. We have Celebration Lifelong. Um, we previously had Wings, um, which was women nurturing young girls strength. That went on hiatus with the Osceola County School District. And we had a new urbanism program that also went on hiatus. Um, Did you also do something with, with taking the high school students to different universities? That was got college, college. Yeah. college. We were in partnership with Valencia, got college, and took kids to a um, to a college campus, Valencia and uh, Kiko, the technical school, and exposed them to um, opportunities, careers, and education. And that was cited by Kathleen Polinsky, who's now the uh, Valencia president, took over for Sandy Shugard. Um, it was cited as one of the top five reasons why the enrollment went up at Valencia College. College going rate in Osceola County was about 40, 44%. 44%. And it went to almost 60 in like three years. I don't think anyone, well, I can speak for myself, and I'm not saying anything against the foundation. I think, I think everyone up here believes the foundation does good work. I just, 
as we're talking about these categories, I believe the foundation falls with as directed by the months of research from the committee. So it's not about the foundation isn't doing the right stuff. I don't think anyone else believe that. No, but I think we're trying to educate and I think it was stated that they don't know what the foundation does. And I think I've been watching the faces over there. And I think there's a little bit of a revelation coming. I don't think they had enough information. I think I just potentially different. We're trying to port we're trying to communicate. Yeah, I, I think that's all fair. Where where I have trouble is weaponizing charity, which is I, I feel like where we we've gotten to at this point. I feel like now we're getting into a discussion about well, if you take two thousand dollars from us, that's two thousand dollars from from there, and, and this board of six is charged with pros. Charles, did you just say weaponizing charity? Yeah, that's what I said. That's what is that? I don't think. What does that mean? You're turning charitable things toward us that we are making poor decisions based on. Having conversations in the objective. Just trying to educate Charles. Oh, that's my opinion. I feel like this is being weaponized. It would be the equivalent of if we get rid of the AA program and a kid on a scooter gets killed on the on the intersection. No. Yeah. Then we shouldn't have gotten rid of that program. I don't think so. Kathleen, can you finish? It's very uh, can you finish, please, what else you have done for the community? Because there's probably not one person in this community that has not been affected by the foundation. You donate to the high school band. You donate to the football team. Donate, donate yes, to the city grand tour. So um, we have that as well annually, where organizations that can't do fundraising for whatever reason and they need to bridge some gaps, they reach out to us and we provide it. I actually think if I had to pick the most important thing that we do is we turn the lights on and we answer the phone. When people call and are just confused of where they need help. Mm -hmm. Whatever that is, even if it's calling the water department, even if it is I need to go on food stamps, we just direct people. I mean, and we connect people. If there's something out there where they can get help, I say this in community connections. I ask everybody, raise your hand if you lived in an HOA before in a subdivision. And every hand goes up. And I say, keep it up if you lived where there was a community foundation. And they all go down. It's unique and up I to do what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So let me, finish with, let me finish with one Kathleen and then we'll stop. The um schools. You heard some of the comments about the schools and the grants that we do there and everything else. We have a relationship with the principals and their SAC committees and everything else. If they need something, they call us. Our goal is that no need goes unmet at the schools. We find a way to get it done, whatever it is. We've done a lot of different things, all the way to buying furniture for the library, finding money for books on the shelves of K-8 because they were gone. Kathleen going to get a bookmark buddies program, third grade reading. It wasn't coming back to our school. I was relentless. I was a pit bull because I know the program works and I knew that kids needed it at our school. So I continued to call. And when I was told no, back in 2013, when it came. I was relentless because I knew 56 children tested below the reading grade level. And I didn't hear no. I heard not right now. And I asked, what do you need? Volunteers, what do you need? Funding. If I get those two things, will you bring it here? You need a voice in this community. There's too much noise. The foundation is that voice. And yes, Cindy, I hear you about the community chorus. And if I was a member of the community chorus and paid my HOA dues and just wanted to come sing with friends of mine and learn and for my mental health, because you know I say music matters because I forgot about the concert series. Um, yeah, you don't have the 9,000 to pay the rent. For I would want you to have a community center with the lights on where you just came and sang. I want the same for Embrace. I want the same for other charities. You don't have the financial funding to be able, but I want it to be equitable too. So it is a rock and a hard place. You're in a hard place. I'm just asking to not be treated different or charged different. I just think there's stature, history, and structure here that we should be her own category. It's Somebody, only yeah. for the one-time transactional thing. Somebody have a relationship with every homeowner. Somebody at the last meeting. Somebody at the last meeting pointed out that every dollar 
we take away from you and other nonprofit organizations is a dollar less that they have to spend on all the good things that you do. Yes, no fun. You know, that is, and I thought that's perfect. That's why the holiday home tour is so it, it, it's so successful. No one is writing a big check to the Gaylor Palms at the end of that event. Homeowners donate their time and decorate their homes and let people walk through and we have tickets. So yes, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Wonderful stuff that you guys do. I get it. But I think I have to back up a little bit in my mind and say, what was it, 300 out? How many hours of, of rental time? Life what is that usually all for lifelong? What, what is that? So, so lifelong celebration, celebration residents that are volunteer instructors, right? That they, if they can, just... no, I get it. But, but how would any, if you lost 50 of those hours, how would that change anything else that you do? It just takes away some of the class. What's the value to them? But it, what we're in competition with somebody else renting the room. No, but, dollar but, dollar. but it wouldn't change anything in the foundation of all the great things you're doing. I think it would, the people that come here for mental health and that, that want to connect with others, they will get 50 less hours to do that. Yeah, but there's art classes, there's other things that are not necessary. If you had to peel back something. If you want to peel could. back something, I say peel back everything. And say no to everyone, and this community is going to look very different. If there wasn't a lacrosse club for my daughter to join, we probably wouldn't have stayed here. If there wasn't music for her to play in a marching band, we probably wouldn't have stayed here. All these things make celebration special. But there has to be given. You know? And we have given. According to everybody else, we've taken. So we were tasked to enrich community residents' lives in celebration, and that's what we do. Celebration lifelong is a piece of that. Yes, it takes 300 hours. I, I agree, but I'm saying is if you lost a few of those hours, I don't think they would change that trend. It, and it's, it hasn't been a problem to date, and we think it probably won't be a problem, but if it was an issue going forward, I, what, I, don't, see, I don't see how we change all the great things you're doing. That, that, that's what you lose me. I don't think we change sex. I do you, think we're wrong, but I, I just don't yeah, see that. Yeah. Do you pay for the space now? No. The space yeah. that you use here, do you pay? Uh, for for sure. heritage, we pay for space. No, for, for when you were here in this building for lifelong. Um, not since the pandemic. No. Yeah, we had a contract and the board voted two years ago to waive fees. Yeah. That was a board decision two years ago, then repeated again last year. Can you repeat that? 315 hours would equal $14,393. That lifelong drive in place is 305 hours, which would be 7,838. But this is enough money. You know, it's made back there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I do want to address the reason that we don't have you in the partner program is because a partner program, both for profit and nonprofit, is a monthly fact flat rate based at 20% of their annual financial statements or 990 statements. None of us want to take 20% of Celebration Foundation. And so therefore that's why we felt it was more appropriate in the Civic and Service Group than we could use Facebook. I think that actually there were, again, going back, there were two separate issues. One is prioritization and separate was the cost. And we, we keep drifting into costs, but those are two set. Those can be totally separate. So looking at the prioritization, if it hasn't been a problem, we have all said, and it is in the documentation, that we're willing to do things on a case-by-case -case basis as needed. That again, this was an outline that we would follow and help any organization based on what they need. If it's not a problem and we're willing to help. And what's funny about this is we didn't change this part. So. It's, it's always, was, it's always been this way. I feel like we're of all the things we've done, I thought we'd get in trouble for a lot more things. I think this but the one thing we didn't change is the one thing being argued. But but if the last document lasted seven years, this may this last. Was 2017. The last I was I was part of that when I was on the rec committee. It's 2017. You pointed it out at okay. our last yeah. meeting. You had it. Yeah, I had it. It's at home. Um, so I think to Mike's point, as we continue to grow and continue to grow and spaces may go down. Um, and when you say we, are you talking about we, you and the we, foundation? No, 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 no. We, we, the community of celebration okay. is growing. 
yes. So I, I, I think that the wise thing to do is moving forward, have a separate designation. And I would ask the committee to deliberate on that before it comes to the board for a vote. I think that's why we're here now. Well, I think the committee is, can. Are you interested in revising this document? I thought we were voting on this tonight because we deferred it from the last board meeting. Yeah, we don't vote on things the workshop. I'm still hung up on the on the not nonprofit or funds paying anything. If this if in this bill in this building, if it's not being used for anything else. They only have to pay if they want to schedule it more. They get two hours a month that they can schedule it advance. Well, that's, if they want more than that, they get two weeks in advance. So it becomes a priority to the residents. So like the celebrators meet once a month. Stage. It stays once. that way. Absolutely. They can have two hours if they need more than that. Then two weeks prior before that, we can either confirm or deny based on what a resident need is. What does the condo, what do the condo board, um, the condo boards meet here? What do they fall under? They're a governing entity, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, so they're they get correct. once a month also? They're number one. They're governing. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Thanks. I'd like to be a big thank you. We don't want to charge people. That was never any. We're not trying to be a for-profit organization. We're just trying to understand oh, I know. what you. I know. Because I told the board, it says, I read the resolution and they did what they were tasked to do. But what David is trying to explain, and I'm trying to explain, is the foundation, even though they've been in this category. Although David has a different paper at home, is their own entity. They should be a separate. They, be, they have a unique role in the community. Because that's what years Disney ago. wanted. And and my my speaking for me, we have to discuss this. My only question to that is what is the legal implications right. on the homeowner association if we do that? It's me as a paying resident. Mm -hmm. We, get, we don't want any legal fees, and I'm sure they don't want it to be on this rec committee that we did it. And as a result, there's legal fees, and that is my question in it. How do we determine that? We asked Tom. There's any legal impl implications from creating a sec separate designation for the foundation or giving them an asterisk or whatever you want to call it, so that if another organization Challenge. said Talon said they got preferential treatment and I do the same thing they do. That's what we're trying to safeguard against. Um, Lauren, we voted on the Gallagher topic previously, so is that an invalid vote because we're at workshops? I'm just trying to understand consistency. It wasn't put on as a motion, it was put on as a discussion item. This, okay. Yeah. So, again, I understand. Let's use Mahjong as an example. So they're a club. So they get the use of a room once a month. And then now tell me about the two weeks, but they need to. We so can they can schedule in advance two hours once a month. So they can be the first Monday of every month. If they want to be every Monday of the month, mm -hmm. then two weeks in advance of each other, the week sec uh, second, third, and fourth week, we can confirm that. As long as a resident doesn't say, I want that space, they, they would can confirm it. it for free. Well, is, but isn't that the same thing as what I said earlier? If, you know, if Mahjong or whoever, you know, wants to use the room and they're not paying for it, then they can, they also may get bumped. If yeah. a resident wants the room. And right. Right. And that's what it says. It has the two weeks in there. So. There's a two weeks. So if they've used their free two hours, yeah. they have to wait until two weeks out from when they want to use the room again. Mm -hmm. And then they, if there's nothing booked in the room at that point, then Nikki can confirm and book it for them. So using the course as an example, using the Knights of Columbus as an example, because I know they book and they, the Knights of Columbus I know also pays. Um, so if they book with you in a year, and somebody comes, you know, crow, whatever, wants to come, you bump them anyway, right? 
No, no, no they would no. be guaranteed those two hours. No, so but not, but not so necessarily course, on the day. Chorus would not be able to book a year out in advance. You could book two hours a month in mm -hmm. advance for your free two hours, but then you would have to come back two weeks prior to so space available. Right. For space available. And you would not be bumped if there was space available. So if it's two weeks out from the date and there's space available and nobody else is using it and Nikki books it, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not gonna get booked, you're not gonna get bumped even if a resident comes in and says, I want to pay to use it. Correct. It's mm -hmm. just a you can't schedule a year out and book the room for a year. You have to just book your two free hours a year out and then come back and mm -hmm. schedule and make Monday sure it's three right. weeks. Like the celebrators, they meet the first Wednesday of every month. Yeah, I know, but this is different because I'm talking about things that are every week. I so if the celebrators wanted to meet, so besides it, Wednesday, mm -hmm. if they if they want to meet now, okay, we want to meet another. We want another we want to day. Have Friday, second. We have to wait yeah. two weeks. Mm -hmm. out right, from that's it. understandable. So for a course, if they want to meet every every Monday of every month just for ease of mm -hmm. talking. You can book out the first Monday of every month for the entire year as mm -hmm. your free two hours. Mm -hmm. The other three Mondays of the month, you'll have to wait till two weeks prior to that Monday to see if it's available and somebody hasn't booked it to then book it for free. Otherwise they could pay for it? Otherwise you can pay for it if you want to book out the other three. And bump out a resident who wants to use it for a birthday party? No, if, if you wanted to schedule the whole year out and secure your every single Monday of of the month, mm -hmm. you would get 12 Mondays for free, or sorry, you would get 12 months worth of Mondays for free. The other three Mondays in that month, you would have to pay for it if you wanted to book it a year out. If you want and to get it for free, a part then program. you have to wait for two weeks. Two weeks ahead. And Cindy, to the previous comment I had with Dave, this is fluid. If choir comes back to us and says, look, our committee, it's been four months and we've gotten every single Monday. Do you think you can give a little bit? Now we've got history. I can get behind it. And if a resident says, hey, I'm trying to book that, I can say no one asked for it for four months. We thought we were doing the right thing. Right now, I just I can't say that. And so I do want to say that it's fluid. I do want to say we want to work with every organization on that. We are just trying to do what we think will benefit the resident. And if a resident never asks, then let's talk about it again. This isn't a one and done conversation. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Is it, am I understanding it right? Is it free if you just book two weeks lead time? It's free. It's available. No fee. No fee. So if the foundation wanted to book two weeks out, it'd be free. Mm -hmm. Each month. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Nothing changed that much here. Which is good. No, I don't don't push the hair, but, but I'm just trying to understand this. So under her example, if for lifelong, for if you were just taking your two free hours and you were booking two weeks out for every other room to get it for free, and you come back for after three months and say, nobody's requesting this because it's the middle of the day and everybody's working and there's no partner programs in here except for us. Can we have a conversation and change this? And that's she's saying, then they're being fluid about it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, we should then change this because I understand what you're getting to, Mike. Is yeah, I see what you're saying. Under civic and service group, it's once a month, two hours at no charge. Any additional would be under the facility agreement. Mm -hmm. And then on club, it says if we require clubs to have a registration fee, you're right. They have to. You're right. So we just have to you're make right. that adjustment. That's fine. And that's why we're here. Getting yeah, more you're right. right. So, Nikki, how long have you worked here in Parks and Recreation? Too long. <laughs> 13 years. 13 years. In those 13 years, the chorus has met every Monday, except for where they take breaks in the activities room. Do you ever remember a conflict with somebody wanting that room where you had to say, no, the chorus is in there? Or how often might that have happened? Uh, to be honest, it would probably be another rec program that, that's pay and rates. It would be like a, like Zumba or X Factor Dance or another program who wanted that room, but we had to move them elsewhere. It's not more. It's not facility rentals. It's more partner programs who are paying. We would have to relocate them, or if there's no indoor space, like then who? I'm sorry, another partner program, another partner. like another partner program, and 
we're running out of indoor space, so they're all going to like the North Village Pavilion at night. Which then drives the residents around North Village Pavilion. Amen. I just logistically, I can't just like let go for now. So you, so there's going to be some speaking to this then, based on what you just said. So what it would be is that if you look under club under usage fee. Clubs that do not require registration fees after that, where it starts, we'll be able to reserve additional hours within a maximum of two weeks notice to parks and recreation team. That phrase would go under, would be in the box above it. One more time. Clubs that do not require registration fees. There we go. From that sentence on, we'll be able to reserve additional hours with a maximum of two weeks notice to the parks and recreation team. That's a copy paste into the box above. Oh, into civic and service groups. Mm -hmm. I actually have Kathleen. Can I ask you a question, Kathleen? Sure. So how would this affect then Lightbone if you had to reach out two weeks in advance? Because I know you do a catalog. It would make it more labor intensive because we would have to email email people the location after they register. Um, we've done it before in the pandemic. It's, I mean, it's doable. Um, but if that's what we need to do, um, to show that, you know, we're doing this two week and there's no other program or, or activity coming in and then reconvenes after the three months. So that's what we'll do. Um, wouldn't that fall under if there's an exception or something else that you needed, whether it be special event or program that we could take things on a case by case basis, which is what we said we would do as a committee. Why would that not fall under that? Because uh, Lifelong and Driving in Place have a contract with Crowa. They have, um, like, so, uh, and wouldn't that be when they just mark in their dates and you pay for the dates? Or how does that work? How does that work currently? I guess let me learn that. Yeah. So uh, they for their service agreement, they'll say they're guaranteed like Monday through Friday. I believe that's what it was for Friday before you all move to the 690 building. And it says from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. They're guaranteed that space, and they'll say at zero dollars per participant. It used to be between five to ten dollars per participant. Well, now they driving doesn't meet here anymore, correct? Friday is at lunch, so just the lunch. So big, so we just do Friday is at lunch. Right. And they have to because they have their own building now. So the space they used last year here is done. Right? So they, they just utilize it on Friday. Just Friday. How many, how many hours did they utilize it last year thriving? Last year for thriving. 305. Right. So right. that's gone right. down considerably right. now because they have their own building. They're only using it, what, two hours on a Friday? Is there any Friday, other Friday. Is there any other organization for civics and service groups on down that does contracts? I'm looking at the definitions community groups. Does, does Embrace do contracts? Be a, oh, no, I'm sorry. No, Bailey else has a contract. Corey has a contract. Not anymore because you're not. Was the, the rate from Crowa included in it? You know, you don't have a contract this year. So we don't have a contract. So for well, civic service groups, clubs, education groups, celebration resident rental, and non resident rental, and those four categories, no one has a contract except thriving in place and lifelong. So the civic and service groups club education group do not have a contract, well, with the exception of K3. Um, celebration residents and non-resident facility, they have that facility agreement, which is like a contract. 
and uh, the only contractors we have are the partner programs. So that'd be like Lindsay, like with X Factor Dance. Uh, it would be uh, Phoenix Lacrosse, Celebration Soccer Club. So if we separated out like long and driving in place from Celebration Foundation and did a contract that was 2,500, they would qualify because we do have nonprofit underneath that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to bring something up. So when you all pay the $10 per participant, uh -huh. it basically equaled $2,500 because mm -hmm. it was about like $1,200 per semester. Is that monthly or? No, I think they do it for fall and spring. They, so so no, the $2,500. Oh, it's annually. It's not annual. Yep. Year. No, but I, I'm just asking overall. If that puts you at 2500 then you signed a contract. It does qualify as fees and our partner programs, non for profit or 501c3. So that qualifies. It's a big thumbs up. I'm trying to think why we wouldn't put it in that category. See, that's why I thought we were in that category when I heard the 2500 for first celebration lights on. Driving, I don't know. It was because of the flat rate based, based on your statements. That was why. Okay. The driving would be six hundred a year. Uh, driving in place used to be, I believe, we received six hundred. The so lifelong might be the only one that qualifies to be a driving company. Correct. I know Becky's been doing a good job with. Um, Ride in place because I know the second Friday of every month, I know they go elsewhere, they don't even utilize crow space. So they're technically here sometimes two or three Fridays per month. They could get the one free one. Mm -hmm. And then they, so I really think that means celebration life, which was not uh, a partner program like high volume day because we're doing it during the day and like Lindsay and everybody else is at night. And then it's holding to a contract, which you're already doing. It will have the parameters in place for time, which will help protect frame manners and staffing and all of that. And then if that needs to be adjusted, we look at adjusting the contract like we would any other program. Mm -hmm. Am I meant? No, oh, I think you're right. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, but so with the course, if they became a partner program, they would pay $2,500 a year and that would guarantee them the room. I think it might be able to. The, uh, the, the partner program would require 20% revenue as well. So anything above 2,500 plus 20% revenue. Yeah, that's the other piece of it. The monthly, because it says under usage fee for profit and nonprofit, monthly flat rate based off of 20% of their annual financial statements or 990 statement. Annual financial statements and 990 statements will be submitted in May and presented to the Finance Committee in August. So it's $25 plus another. Plus no, $25. no. So it, it would be like if you made $10,000, that's uh, 2000 would be your 20%. And if you want to guarantee yourself your partner program, you would pay an extra 500 on top of that. So you're at 2,500. But let's say now you make 20,000. So 20% 20 of 20,000 is 4,000. You would just pay 4,000. You wouldn't pay 4,000 plus an extra 2,500. It's a minimum of 2,500. The rest is based on the financial statement. Based on the course numbers that you provided, they would be paying 2,500. But on 7,000. $7,000 of income. I still don't like the idea of them, anybody paying, but. What other questions? So they're going to do their tweaking. We now in next week, yes. Would you be able to do that? No? We'll have it. Oh, but I need for our next meeting so we can put it on the agenda. <laughs> so Merry Christmas. So we can unanimous committee. Would that be okay by email or if they all agree? 
Absolutely. Is, is this for both the categories and the 2024 facility agreement? Did anything need to be adjusted? We can vote on the agreement. I don't think there's any concerns with that. You can't vote on it. This is a workshop. It's an action item on the agenda. I'm just so confused why we keep changing the rules. But the increased rental rates can go into effect and be voted on, right? Just they rates. should be able to, but it's changes. I don't, I don't understand. It is an action item on the agenda. Do it all together at the next meeting, just for action discussion item. <laughs> You're going to do an action item, but so we can keep everything together. Yeah, we can do it all for it. Did we figure out where we're going with the foundation, categorizing them, or are they staying where they are? Lauren was going to ask Tom. Right. We're asking what the legal Victoria legal. So the question to Tom would be if another um, philanthropic organization comes and wants to use our space, then if we're not charging the foundation, but we're charging other Similar philanthropic organization. What are the legal implications? The foundation has a problem paying. They don't have. They just. No. It's just a separate category because they're. If they got preferential treatment with the space, but so. they don't. I don't think they do. Do you? That's, That's what's being asked. asked though. For it. If we're moving them to one or one A, it'd be preferential treatment. The space. So what they're saying is, if I have a 501c3 that's philanthropic and I want to have this room and Kathleen with Celebration Foundation got access to the room before me and I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sue. That's not fair. What is the legal implications? They can sue. Well, that's, what we're, that's, what we're we're that's what we're asking. We don't know that answer. Well, if we go back to the language I had. Organization based on celebration serving primarily celebration residents that has unique responsibilities to provide services that directly and indirectly enhance the quality of life in accordance with the vision and design plans created by the celebration company to serve the community in perpetuity. So another organization comes along where they created by the celebration company to serve the community. Well, no, I, I don't think the document is directly created. To, to defend putting them in a car back category is going to hold up in court. I don't have a law degree, but I'm just saying we have I wrote I wrote that language. Right. I know, but I My know point is if we're relying on this to no, I, I am saying since Disney created that vision and wrote those standards and filed this document, honor that today. That's why I'm asking a lawyer. What would What's that? That's why we're asking a lawyer. That's the lawyer. So the language here, there is no other organization unless you can find it in other historical documents. But it's not based on that. It's based on a philanthropic. I'm, no, I'm it. basing it on the, this is the definition. You are Which the recreation are. committee. It's I, not. I understand. But we'll see what the lawyer says. And if it's okay, then I feel strongly that it should be category two. So they're not getting preferred for treatment. They just want a star by their name. Is that basically it? No, it's preferential treatment. It's a priority. It's a public priority. It's, it's, it's not unlike the self health has a separate designation because that's different than a club. That's no problem. If, if we're talking about again, if, if we're paying into it, that that's fine. Those arguments are fine. But but creating separate document and, and separate carve out categories that that's and I don't again I don't I don't they're not defined. I just that. defined it. You define it. They're not defined. That's yeah. a proposed that the board has to vote on. Absolutely the case. I did, Lauren, correct me if you think this is incorrect. I, we're a private organization, Croa, so uh, we can accept and Tom is going to tell us that we can do whatever we want. You don't have to. Yeah. He, okay, yes, that's enough. With, <laughs> expand without, don't, don't say anything. Because yeah. we're not a government organization. As a private organization, I believe that we can we can give preferential treatment to whoever we want. That's the, the legal answer that's going to come back is that. So just to speed that along, I believe that's how that's going to end up. There's some guardrails around that, but that's the general concept that's going to come back. First come, first serve. Um, one thing I suggest is on uh, 
the facility rates, we did make one change. I don't know if uh, Nikki pointed it out, but on I-5, uh, we changed it uh, that may not be used for religious services to may not be used for religious services without prior approval. I just wanted to point that out before we concluded today. Thank you. Good to know. Um, so the, what, what we have in front of us, correct or not correct? It is correct. It is, it it's, is correct. It's just a notable change. Uh, the, the motivation that we had was, uh, I think, some, uh, we already had some churches using some of the space, and uh, we had some weddings being performed at some of the facilities. Uh, so uh, we wanted to acknowledge that that happens. Okay. While we're on that, I have a question that I raised at the board meeting, and it actually came through either yesterday or the day before with a resident complaint about noise levels. Uh, at an outdoor facility called North Village Pavilion, and the noise levels were unacceptable. So can we have a use condition and requirement about not disturbing neighbors, however we worded that? And that's if the person even rented it legally. Do we rent it or not rent it? Who knows? Sunday. Say that again. Wouldn't that be an issue? You call the sheriff. Because I only ask the question. No, there's. They look at the income for North Village. People that look at the number of parties. To me, this is because it's a billion. Nobody ever gives me a photo show either way. Also, in Harrison, they do the same thing. So so that becomes a silly thing. Is the power on? Or off? Show from six to eight. In other words, is the power on a timer so that it's only on when it's rented and then it's not the fans and the lights are not on and the outlets not on? So, in other words, plugging in a boom box won't work unless you've rented it. Yeah, that's it. Good idea. That's, that's, that's a good idea. That's a structural thing. Adjust the electrical so it does that. Yeah. That's a good idea. I was going to say the same thing, but you said it oh, first. You, so I love your idea. You're the engineer. Yeah. But uh, but I just think I just think something about noise levels. I mean, it can be at heritage. Or... David, I was having a sidebar, but oh, looking at the finances and the income from that pavilion doesn't seem to equate with the actual number of Parties observe parties. So if there's, there's no money. money. Well, a lot of times residents don't go through parking work. They just right. show up first come first serve to use it, which they're permitted to do. But this will take care of the noise issue. Well, help take care of the noise issue. That's I, mean, I think the noise issue would be good to, good to address. Just public disturbance or whatever you want. Yeah. We are. And just else? a technical question. Did the non-resident rates go up? Yes. I mean, what were they before? They, are they were only $25 double. more. And now we 25% more? We $25. Doubled. It's a nice idea. But we, whatever a resident rate was, we doubled right. it. Prior before, it was only a $25 increase. Okay. But so avoid that a resident paid either. 75 A non-resident was paying 100 mm -hmm. Now they will pay double of 75 do, do we have a history over the last maybe two years of how many not how many times things have been rented to a non-resident and what the income has been? We did do that in a meeting. We found it most significant in Heritage Hall that non-residents went there mainly for um, showers, baby shower, wedding showers, or wedding receptions. And so that was part of the um, okay. reasoning for driving up that revenue. Okay. And David, um, we had 93% of residents book in, 6% non-resident book in. Okay. Do you have this year. Okay, that's helpful. Do they put in their contract? Because I know the foundation had in their contract that they were able to use that pool area. And it was very detailed contract about the fencing. Do they have in their contract when they're renting Heritage Hall that they just can't open the doors and go out into the pool area and have a free for all out there? From um, seven of, like a wedding? Like if they're having a wedding in Heritage and there's kids that want to go swimming, they can open those doors and go right out onto the pool deck right. and use the yeah. pools. Right. It, that's more of, to be honest, that's more of a conversation um, with our Parks and Rec team when we meet. Mm -hmm. However, we can try to include this in the agreement. Do, do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I feel like space you're rented is the space you're right can because use. they had very strict instructions, the foundation on what had to be done for them to be able to pay to use that pool deck. Right, Kathleen? 
and it was in your then, contract. Then transform the space. Yes. To a new space. Right. So good conversation. Thank you guys so much for this. I think it's very helpful. It's a lot of help. Come across. I think we should do a lot more workshops with all the committees. There you go. Because it helps. Look through there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I really do because you took your time out and we sat here and we had a, a conversation that needed to happen. So we understand the amount of hours you put into this are like unbelievable, but you're only following and you did follow what you were tasked to do. So thank Next you. time there's a project like this, then encourage the committee to come with it a couple months. Before yeah, a, wor a, a working <laughs> a workshop, before a working about that. Thank you. Okay, Thank so we have a motion from Charles to adjourn. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you, everybody, Thank so you. much. Thanks for all your hard work. Happy holidays, everyone.